So, this lecture is going to be about strength and conditioning. We have discussed what is fitness, we have discussed what is sport. Now, what is strength and conditioning? What is it that we specialists do? So, strength and conditioning is the practical application of sports science to enhance movement for its quality and to improve sports ultimately. Okay. So, the idea behind strength and conditioning is to enhance your movement quality to improve sports performance to win and maximize and minimize overuse injury risk. Now, this whole definition might be a bit sort of, you know, big, but keep it, if we have to keep it uh, simple, you apply sports science knowledge to make sure that movement is better. So, if we look at a swimmer, we want to make sure that the swimmer can move better, okay. And then what does, what does the swimmer want? I mean, is moving better good enough? Obviously not. They want to win which is extremely important when we talk of sports strength and conditioning. It is important to understand that strength and conditioning and more sports science, everything in sports science, the whole idea, what we aspire for is to win. And along with winning, what is it that you want to apply all this science? You want to minimize overuse injury risk. Acute injuries you can't prevent. You know, somebody tackles somebody on a, a football ground, you really can't do much about that. It is just one of those uh, hard facts of, it's like an occupational hazard, okay. But you can minimize injury risk to, which happens due to overuse. So, strength and conditioning, again I repeat, strength and conditioning is the practical application of sports science to enhance movement quality, to improve, in brackets, sports performance, general performance also. But the whole idea between sports performance is to win and minimize overuse injury risk. The next point which says below is that it's sports centric, okay. So, we normally work in liaison with technical coaches. Now, in today's times, strength and conditioning is an often used word, you know, it's sort of very cool to be called um, a strength and conditioning coach. So, many times people say that, okay, we have strength and conditioning classes in our gym. And I sometimes ask, you know, like, what do you mean by strength and conditioning classes? They'll say we do different things. We have hurdles, we have a big tire which we try to flip, then we hit it with the hammer, we do you know, rope slams. Uh, kettlebell swings. So, strength and conditioning definition wise, you know, if you look at the origin of strength and conditioning, strength and conditioning was to have the strength and the conditioning for a particular sport. Now, it's been used more generic to say that, okay, strength and conditioning for the average person. But when we're talking about it, we're talking of that very elite level uh, field where you're working with athletes where there's a responsibility. The average person who goes to a gym and does some maybe tire flips or rope slams is not training for winning. And this is something we have to understand. The whole process behind getting educated and getting knowledge in sports science is to help somebody improve in their sport to win. And there's a very clear role you play. So that becomes the difference between using the term strength and conditioning generically and then saying what is a strength and conditioning coach. A strength and conditioning coach is somebody who works with sports people to improve their performance, to enhance their performance. A uh, person who uh, is a strength and who's using strength and conditioning for regular workouts in the gym is still using the principles, but it's not that they are uh, doing something um, to improve their sports performance. So to give a maybe a more basic answer which will make sense, it's like somebody who has a very powerful super bike, okay, you see sometimes super bikes on the street. So, a super bike can be used on the street, it can be very powerful, it can go fast and then there's those who race with them on an official track and then you get to know who's the best one. So, those people who work with those motorbike races who go on a track, they are responsible because they know exactly what to do with that motorcycle and the skill which is taught to them has a reason because they want to be their fastest. Whereas a super bike that's used on the street, just maybe, you know, for going around town or meeting friends, uh, you are not wanting it to be the best because that's not the whole, you're not competing against somebody. So this becomes the difference in strength and conditioning, specialization, working with athletes. And then you can, of course, utilize the principles for general use as well. Now also to understand that you have to work with a technical coach. Strength and conditioning in sport cannot work in its own world, you know, by itself. There has to be a technical coach who should be able to use what you give. If you're giving something to the athlete, making them fitter in strength, endurance, cardiovascular, 
whatever be the case. If the technical coach is not able to use it and the player is not able to use it, there's really no point. So this is something to be understood again and this is where the specifics come in, you know, of a general person who works, who works out in a gym and does some movements which look nice versus a strength coach who's working with a technical coach to enhance technical movements. So it's important to understand this, that all you do in the gym, all you do on the field or any testing or anything you do has to help the technical coach and the athlete to improve technique. If there's a workout which is amazing, very hard, looks very fancy, you know, and today's world of social media can be very nice to post certain things. In the real world, when you work with sports, if this is not helping this, it is of no use. Sounds harsh, but that's the truth. So now, coming to the million dollar question. Fitness, we spoke about the five components and then SNC, what's the difference? So here's the difference. You can see two tables, okay? You have the components of fitness and then in this second one, which is the components of SNC, you have those as well and plus more. So what this implies and what is very important to understand for SNC specialists is that you have fitness which is a must when you're doing strength and conditioning and this is sometimes forgotten a lot of young coaches sometimes jump the gun and go into advanced movement patterns the skill related components without having the basics in place so somebody who's doing strength and conditioning has to be fit that person that player and then they to have they tend to have they need six other uh, v variables to make them even better and different to the average person in the gym who has that fitness as well. But it doesn't mean that the sports person doesn't need those basic fitness variables for themselves. Okay, so muscle strength, a must, muscle endurance, a must, cardiovascular endurance, a must, flexibility, a must, and body composition, a must. Okay, you have to have these and only then will you be able to get the best results if you move on to the next, which is agility, which is balance, coordination, speed, power, and reaction time. Okay. So we'll be going into uh, each of these specific skill related components, okay? How are they different to maybe, how is agility different to say muscle strength? Uh, how is balance uh, different to muscle endurance? So as it says there, it's a skill related, uh, it's a skill related uh, component. So when we talk of agility and when we get into the definition, you'll realize that this requires thinking, this requires your mind to be in, this requires your mind to be in, mind 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 some of them require a lot of mind coordination so this sort of gets you can say it's a body and mind together here more whereas i could be doing flexibility i could be stretching and i could be thinking of something completely different okay somebody could have great body composition but not able to bring that body to perform a skill okay so these are skill related all these six and these are general fitness principles which are important but these become the next level so the progression from here to these is extremely important okay so now talking of agility what is it agility is the ability to accelerate decelerate stabilize stabilize and quickly change direction with optimum posture in simple words you're able to start you're able to stop and while stopping you slow down or rather start slow down stop change direction all fast and with good posture and why it's good posture because obviously there's no point in doing this and then falling if you're a, a football player you want to explode you want to decelerate slow down you want to then change direction in the right uh, posture you don't want to be falling and changing uh, direction so though you've changed direction there it's no point if your posture is not right there's a small video example of this you can have a look at this person who's uh, you can check not now i'll tell you which one to look at so here this is the person you look at look at him he now runs okay he slows down changes direction and then goes again okay so you can see the speed changes you know there's sometimes when it's fast sometimes it's slow i'll play this again just to get a feel of it okay let's try to go and play this again yeah so just check not this person as he keeps coming okay so the his speed is increased okay when he sees somebody in front he changes direction completely changes okay starts again fast 
and changes. So it's basically he's starting fast, coming back, slowing down, changing, but with good posture. He didn't lose the ball from his hand. Okay, so that is what agility is. Going to the next one now. Now balance. What is balance? Okay, the ability to maintain equilibrium when st stationary or moving. So as the name suggests, balance. You're able to stay balanced either stationary or while moving. So static balance, there's a definition there. Static balance and you can see the lady here, you know, who's in this particular posture, it's static, she's not moving. Okay, and this is the yoga tree pose that is often done by people. Okay, which is a great pose for static balance. Okay, so she's doing that and what is it? It is the ability to retain the center of mass. Okay, so her whole mass which is here, above the base of support in a stationary position. So base of support is this, the base and it's supporting and the center of mass is over this. So she is able to control. So that is static balance. Somebody who is practicing will be able to control. Okay. What is dynamic balance? If that is static balance, then what is dynamic? Dynam dynamic balance is the ability to maintain balance with body movement. So what's the difference between this lady's posture and balance? And what's the difference between this gymnast on a balance beam? Okay. This gymnast, as you can see, she's in mid-flight, she's into a somersault, okay, probably doing a backflip, um, but or rather she's she's doing a somersault in front. But as you can see, she's in mid-flight, and then with that movement, she's still going to land and balance and hold. She's moving and still she's balancing. Whereas here she's not moving. So this is important to understand that these are two different types. Which one is the harder one out of this? You should obviously be able to know, you know, which one is harder without a doubt this. And this is what makes the difference between a sports person. It's a very high level of skill and this is what most general people will do. So we have to understand when we add certain terms of teaching, what is it that we are teaching? Okay, what is it that we are actually saying is needed for a particular sport? Okay. Now we go to the next uh, skill related component of strength and conditioning, which is extremely important, which is coordination. And probably this is one of the more important components. What is coordination? Coordination is the ability to use the right muscles, or a muscle or muscles at the right time with the right intensity. So what it means is everything. If somebody is, you know, maybe um, like the person who's doing the uh, tennis serve, okay, he throws the ball, okay, up, and then he goes back with his racket and at the right time after the movement, he's able to connect. There would be obviously no point if he's going to throw the ball and the ball falls and then he connects uh, and then he tries. And this is what would happen with somebody less skilled, you know, somebody, an average person goes and tries tennis who's never played. They are just not able to connect the ball because their coordination levels are not high. So coordination in the definition you can see, it involves optimal sequencing and timing of synergistic and reciprocal muscle activity with proximal stability to produce the required action efficiently. Now to again explain this in simple terms, it involves optimal sequencing, meaning everything takes place at a certain pace, okay, everything falls into place and timing of synergistic, which are muscles that are creating the uh, movement, which are helping in creation of that movement and reciprocal muscle activity, which are the agonist and antagonist muscles are working together, okay, with proximal stability, meaning the stability around the core, okay, in the center, so it's stabilized, and then everything is happening to produce an action, which is efficient. Ultimately, we want what? We want efficient action. If the action is not efficient, all the strength and all the coordination, all the power in the world really doesn't, uh, you know, help much, right? So. This is important to understand, okay, that coordination is something where everything works together to get a movement done. Now, from a SNC perspective, what, how can you, you know, add some coordination drills, okay? So, here coordination comes along with sort of, you can say, balance, okay? You have to make a person in the gym do some exercises which require them to think, which require to use the mind more. And I'll give a simple example here. Coordination would be something where 
you make them do something a very basic exercise okay very basic exercise such as bicep curls which is done for strengthening the uh, bicep muscles right very simple not much thinking you see very common everybody does how do you add maybe something as simple as um, um, for coordination you no know, to to add to it you can make coordination in such a way that you use dumbbells instead of a barbell your one arm goes up so there's a concentric movement as it's going into each center you coordinate so that this one comes up at the same time so as this is going down midway they meet this goes up again midway they meet this goes you can then also add you know from a neutral position or from a completely pronated position you get into supination okay which is again a great move for a bicep exercise because you're using its proper function so you supinate you supinate so this is a simple exercise now has coordination what does it take for this coordination my mind you have to be using your mind so instead of just taking a bar and just you could be dreaming and doing this and i've done my 10 reps and i put it down you add something like this it just makes the athlete think more and more coordination you can make now that action into a bit more advanced by making that person stand on a uh, balance board so now that once they on that balance board you have a uh, balance as well okay you start doing that on a balance board now you got balance plus you've got your alternate doing you are really so switched on your mind cannot be thinking of something else you want to make it harder get off the balance board stand on one leg later progress to Uh, the balance board with one leg so there's so many variations but the idea here is to make it coordinated and this coordination can be used even for a shoulder press you are doing dumbbell shoulder presses instead of two together one up down okay and generally if we see in most actions whether it's a tennis serve badminton smash boxing when one arm is moving the other has to be in coordination this arm is not dead when somebody is punching it's not down or when somebody is hitting a badminton smash this is not down in hitting they go in this to stabilize and then from here full they'll go into external rotation and then when they the point of contact now slowly come here up contact a bit of internal rotation at the end now all this is where coordination comes in so if we can also do this with a bit of the training in the gym okay as long as it's of course safe and as long as it's you know something which helps this can make that strength more useful that you gain instead of just strength which is just going up down up down and i could be watching tv and doing this between that and between strength which is coordinating between the two sides okay isn't that going to be more effective especially for sport so these are things by which we can improve coordination by doing some of these uh, movements in the gym now the next component of strength and conditioning an important one we hear this quite often speed okay what is speed the ability to move the body or body parts in necessary direction in the shortest time so the shortest dis- time, distance between two points is a straight line right and the faster you go that's sort of defined as speed so a body to go in the necessary direction speed is important but speed is also important to know that you have to be again like i said it's not speed doesn't mean just wild movement speed is something where you know where you're going so these different sort of aspects which you've spoken about for sport the six uh, components you really look at it it's all about the mind in there there's movement with mind okay so speed to has to be in the right direction know exactly where you're going you're going at your fastest you're training to be fast but then the idea is to know where you're going so in this picture if you see you know these guys who are all running if you see this guy's di- there's a direction it's not like this guy is running this side and the other one's running in the opposite direction and this guy is running somewhere else they know what they're heading for so this is important to understand with speed okay and of course the um, gait pattern changes you know when somebody is doing sprints from the knee position you can know at the hip the angle how much they flex you can know are they sprinting or are they jogging so you can make out a lot of things you know from the um, actions itself but sorry but the ultimate point is that speed has to be with direction so with these movement patterns that we've spoken and with with uh, the um, uh, six uh, points that we are discussing now you know for strength and conditioning it's all about what your is your mind switched on are you doing it with a purpose there is a purpose in all these movements okay the idea is to improve 
in the gym and then hopefully that transfers to uh, the ground or the court for the athlete but us doing things in the gym without any direction then we're no different to the average person who's training in the gym okay who's just training for fitness and who probably is you know has his headphones on is talking to a friend and doing his biceps then he does some triceps then maybe once in a while he do some clap push ups but he's not really switched on his mind is not in the movement as good strength and conditioning coaches we want to get the athlete's mind in the movement the more they are aware of what they're doing the more they are aware of getting everything together the more the transfer of that specific strength power everything to sport okay so important to understand that speed also is not just fast movement it is fast movement in the necessary direction now this one okay very popular word we all hear a lot about power what is power power is the ability of a muscular unit or a combination of muscular units or the whole body to apply maximum force in a minimum time so what is maximum force maximum force is strength and in the chapter on uh, strength and conditioning uh, varun will be talking about uh, the force velocity curve and explaining about that so don't miss that lecture of course that's going to be a good one so when you have a lot of strength let's say somebody is there who can do a lot of squats you know with with, with very heavy weight they are able to do 3 reps with pretty decent weight what would be missing in those heavy movements speed because they would be doing heavy weights cannot obviously be moved fast so power attempts to take that strength and then make it useful by making the person move fast so it's somebody who is doing say heavy squats the aim is to over time make them faster as well so you need the strength first to be able to get to power so here an interesting point to note trying to develop power without a good base of strength generally doesn't work because what can happen there is a lot of injuries come in and many coaches make this mistake of getting into power training too soon they haven't gone through the endurance phase the stability and then the strength and then power they just try to jump in and again in the periodization uh, lecture will be going about this but power is nothing but your strength which you've built and then adding speed to it and obviously if you are lifting an x amount of weight for strength you are not going to be able to move it at the same speed that you you know uh, so let's assume just to, sorry to to give this example think of it you can lift say 80 kilos okay in a squat you are lifting 80 kilos you can do that just twice and that's your max okay fair enough now you are okay to lift only that now if i ask you to move fast with that okay and do it for maybe 10 reps okay or even six repetitions can you do 80 no it's just too heavy for you but if i reduce that 80 and make it to maybe 25 and then ask you might say okay yes i can now try and then you can try to move fast so that is where we are working on speed because and we are working on power because we've added speed to that movement okay so hope this is clear you know power is nothing but speed added to strength okay so the whole idea is to move fast but with load okay so where is speed uh, slightly different to you can say power speed there's no load okay here we're talking power you can move load fast speed you can move your body fast okay so if a simple way if you look at speed is a uh, speed where the body kind of moves fast could be the whole body or could be just hand speed a boxer who has very good jabs you know who can go boom like fast you no know? somebody like a uh, bruce lee who so famous for his speed he has good hand speed okay and is amazing but that does not mean maybe he he might not be able to sprint very fast okay so there are different um, definitions you can look at speed as whole body or different part especially your hands and legs somebody who's got very good kicks in taekwondo his leg speed is fast he might not be able to sprint fast but speed ultimately is about moving from point a to point b fast and power is about moving an x amount of load fast okay which ultimately can improve your body's speed as well but it does need load to improve so power is where load and speed come together okay and you can see this example of this uh, here the the poster or the picture that i've used you can see this is a weightlifting move 
and um, this bar now he's obviously quickly uh, snatched it up and kept it there so this is an explosive lift a type of explosive lift that is used a lot in training to develop power okay and as effective as it is it is also something which can become very tricky if you don't have the skills for this how much of this really transfers to um, sport is again a question we have to ask you know if it's explosive does it mean it just applies to every sport and to give an example here i would say you know let's say uh, this gentleman now from the floor he's able to lift the bar very fast okay and push it up okay what is happening with the bar the bar is accelerated for power and then at the top you have to decelerate the move so you're going fast and you have to slow down to decelerate okay so one is that that you're accelerating and decelerating second is something where the person is pulling this bar in a direction which is vertical so if there's somebody who wants to use strengthening or you know weight training to get stronger in a movement such as to give an example maybe uh, say um, a good badminton smash when you, know, you turn you're rotating your legs you jump in the air your legs extend and you're locking yourself and there's a nice turn what is the direction of force that the person wants the shuttle wants to travel here whether it's a boxing punch you want somebody to get stronger which is the direction of force so where should be the resistance which direction should it be should i be focusing on resistance which goes in this direction and then i'm working against it or do you want the resistance to be in this direction and i'm working against it here so important question i want you guys to think about this okay i want you all to ask are all movements which are explosive going to transfer and this is where you have to think you have to use a bit of your creativity to really question sometimes there's a lot of established norms you know where people do and we see and many movements are amazing like this movement is amazing where will it be applied is where comes your brains is a good strength and conditioning specialist you need to know which movement to apply and what explosive qualities will come to you or your athlete after doing so what i've explained now about the movement of something uh, a lift like this which goes overhead at good speed very uh, high speed good power what is that power going to help for is something you have to decide and you have to know which sport which action is it is it a lateral action you're looking at or is it something which you're looking in a straight line so is it in the sagittal plane is it in the frontal plane or is it in the transverse plane you know these are things i think a bit more uh, basic more than a basic but you have to know exactly what you're doing a movement for you're doing it just because it is explosive or are you doing it because it will help you in the specific movement that you want to improve your athlete in now coming to the last point in this okay and which is probably the most important in my opinion okay of all the uh, things and this is sometimes a bit of genetic as well some people just have better reaction time and some people can improve as well so along with coordination i have found in my experience that the reaction time is one of those things you know which makes the difference between a champ and somebody who's also fit or maybe skillful reaction time is what reaction time again if we go by definition interval time between a stimulus and the initiation initiation of the muscular response to that stimulus so i've given an example of swimmers here uh, in swimming you stand on the blocks you know then you'll hear you know take your mark and then there's a beep to you know and then people dive in okay so the person who hears that starting sound and reacts earliest okay that is the person you know, who gets in there fastest so in this picture if you see okay there are so many swimmers who are jumping in right some are in a very good position okay you can see this person here is also in a good position but some hands are closer to the water maybe this guy and this guy are closer this person's angle is slightly down so various different things here there's another hand you can see which is still far away and this can be the difference the person obviously who gets into the water first you can just imagine the advantage he has you know he will cover more distance come out quick and then out now starting here and responding to that sound which you hear the take your mark and the beep and from there the person sort of you know dives in this can set the pace for the whole race if your start is good 
and especially in short races you know which are like 50 meters it can make a whole difference between you know what you're going to achieve in the end because you just have a huge advantage when you start well and reaction time is that and reaction time this is of course an example of swimming but reaction is also in boxing a person whose reaction is so good that they can duck a punch or they can move out of a uh, of the range of a punch just imagine how much advantage that person has over somebody who takes a bit slower it's all about that punch landing on your face and somebody who can react and move so reaction time becomes extremely important it is one of those things you know when they see something happening the stimulus and the response you know it's sort of the response is appropriate and slightly faster for the stimulus so that you can respond in time you know something's coming your way okay it could be a punch it could be a, a shuttle which is coming at high speed and you know what to do maybe get into a position which is not awkward somebody who takes a shuttle on the body okay and versus somebody who moves a bit out and takes it or somebody who reacts in time to get under the shuttle what's called in badminton like it's right under and the person is right under and hits a good shot versus somebody who's late to react and takes it here okay which leads to other issues you know of body you know taking load so there's so many factors here okay but reaction time is one of the most important factors when it comes to uh, success and the second one like i said i in my opinion is uh, coordination because these two make sure that everything you've got your strength your muscle endurance your body composition your agility all these fall into place these all without reaction time almost doesn't make sense okay so we have to understand that you know reaction time is something that makes everything come together and then when it's done it has to fall in place so now how do we do this in uh, strength and conditioning in the gym you do practice drills where you react okay especially in sports where there's reaction which is so important like swimming uh, track and field it is so so important for the person to not just have power but also know to react at the shortest time and if that is not helping you can just imagine how much work can be wasted your player can be the fittest swimmer could be very good his strokes could also be very good his or her strokes but if their reaction is not their best just imagine what could be happening and how much time can be lost in that okay so we've gone through all these points now and if we go back again okay now as we see these points okay you can see i've gone back to the first slide components of fitness for only fitness you are training a general person in the gym you can focus on the first you want to train an athlete you focus on the others now can an average person also focus on the others yes but the risks are slightly higher so we have to understand that skill related components of snc these carry a bit of risk with them for example agility change of direction an average person who's an office goer tries that they might not be able to sustain the lateral movement and not be able to control they might not have eccentric control to slow down so they might injure their ankle uh, if they are not good and if you try them you know an average person to run fast at high speed their hamstrings might not be able to take it they might not be able to tolerate speed they might even have a fall power somebody who's training for power and nowadays of course a lot of people who are not athletes train for power it the skill related components do carry their own risks as well and that's where a highly trained efficient specialist is important who can observe and make sure that like i said earlier the right medicine is given to the right patient okay some people just do some of these other drills because they are a bit more cooler right agility balance speed they looks appear so cool to do some of the lifts are so cool to do very instagram friendly if we may call it okay so we have to understand that uh, these components are for athletes and if anybody else is using it has to be monitored if the athlete is using it they have to be monitored even more because you know it can make a huge difference it can make your body it can break your body as well so exercise is something obviously you know which has its own pluses and minuses but yeah these are the six skill related components which are additional and necessary for sports okay if you're working with somebody who is into a power based sport or very physically demanded 
a physically demanding sport then the skill related components become important but the basic the five are also important many people jump the gun and go from agility onwards without having muscle strength and endurance really not going through the whole uh, phase so you have to have those and this if you really want to say that somebody is an athlete and is really not just fit but is also athletic fit or swimming fit or football fit so hope this lecture has been helpful and hope that you know it it takes you through all these uh, different uh, components and you've understood and got a clear idea about what is required for uh, strength and conditioning and now what is the difference between strength and conditioning fitness and sport okay so these three lectures were for that and that clarity so we know exactly what we do when we work with whom fitness is for the average person who just wants to be fit sport is for people who want to play a certain sport for fun or for profession but sport is not for fitness in fact there's a saying that you no know, you don't play sport to get fit you have to be fit to play sport strength and conditioning is for professional sports it is to help professionals get better okay can strength and conditioning just be used for the average you know maybe a housewife or maybe an office going person who has just joined the gym can i straight away put them on agility because it is so nice i can put some cones and make them do side to side would it make sense these are questions you have to ask yourself okay and then come up with the best solution like i said the right medicine for the right patient okay not a fixed medicine for every patient so hope this helps you guys in designing better programs and we'll be getting to other lectures where you'll learn a lot more thank you